I've always wondered how these work. Don't you? Well, welcome to Las Vegas. We are at CES, or the Consumer Electronics Show. And it just so happens that Abbott, the company who makes these tests and also does a lot of other cool medical technology, is the first medical company ever to have a keynote presentation here at CES. People are living longer than ever before, and we are using technology to ensure that those longer lives are lived to the fullest. And so I partnered with them to make this video so that we can get to the bottom of how COVID-19 at-home tests actually work. Okay, at the Abbott booth at the Las Vegas Convention Center here at CES. And it's, it's been a weird one thanks to the Omicron variant of COVID-19 kind of hitting here in the US, but I've actually been using the Abbott Binax now at home tests every morning since I've been here. And so far, five days, five negative tests. Which brings us back to the original question of this video, which is how do these tests even work? Well, to talk about that, we first need to really quickly discuss the anatomy of a virus. So looking at the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, which is the virus that causes COVID-19, which is the name for the disease, technically, we have a protective shell called a capsid. And around that, we have a viral envelope that adds more protection, and in some viruses, helps the virus avoid detection, but also has viral surface proteins on it, like a spike protein that we've heard about recently, that help it attach and infect host cells. Inside the capsid is where we have nucleocapsid proteins that enclose the RNA, which is the instructions for creating new viruses. Now, since viruses lack the ability to self-replicate, they need to inject their RNA into a host cell, like those in our body, to get that cell to replicate the virus for it, until it then collapses, releasing the newly created viruses, and the cycle continues. Now, antibodies are Y-shaped proteins produced by the body that the top of the Y will bind only to specific proteins that it is targeted for. Normally in your body, these are created after your body is infected by a specific antigen or virus in this case, and they attach to say the spike protein and essentially mark that intruder to be attacked by other parts of our immune system. Now the issue for us is that viruses mutate and generally that means the viral surface proteins will change. When they do, the current antibodies we have in our blood no longer recognize them right away and we get sick. Well, these tests work in a similar way using antibodies, but instead of looking for the surface proteins on the virus, they look for the nucleocapsid proteins, which are located inside the virus and don't generally change that often, and also happen to be the most abundant protein in the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And after talking to the virus hunters, yes, a real job title for some people at Abbott, I learned just how the tests do this, and it's pretty clever. But while we're here at the Abbott booth though, it turns out that Abbott makes a lot more than just COVID tests. This is the iStat TBI plasma test, the world's first rapid test to detect proteins in the blood released by the brain after a concussion to give objective detection of them right after someone comes off the field, for example. And this is the Infinity DBS system that can send electrical impulses to the brain to stop tremors for people with Parkinson's disease and can even be remotely adjusted specifically to that person by a physician. And then there's this, CardioMEMS device that is the size of a paperclip that can be implanted in the pulmonary artery to detect changes in the pressure to remotely monitor heart failure that uploads the data to your physician automatically so they can make sure that the condition doesn't worsen. Okay, let's head outside and we can talk more about the tech in the at-home COVID tests. So this Abbott Binax Now test is using what is called a lateral flow assay architecture. So you take out the test, which contains a card, which you then fold open and lay flat on a surface. On the left, we have the test strip, which we'll get to in a sec, and we have two holes on the right. You fill the top hole with an extraction reagent, six drops in this case, and then you use a swab to collect a sample from each of your nostrils. Place it in the bottom hole and up into the top hole. Rotate it three times to ensure the sample and reagent are properly integrated, and then you peel the adhesive and close the test up. Now at this point, the test strip is now in contact with the nasal swab sample and reagent, and inside that reagent, we have various substances, but 
there is what is called a detergent, which in a similar way to soap breaks down the outer shells of the virus. So all of the nucleocapsid proteins are now exposed and then starts to flow laterally, hence the name of the architecture, across the strip. Now the first area that it touches is called the conjugate pad, and it contains the antibodies that bind to the SARS-CoV-2 nucleocapsid proteins, but they have gold attached to the other end of them. Yes, like gold gold. Now these continue to bind as the fluid moves across the strip, and when it reaches the first line, our test line, it binds to other antibodies that are specific to the virus protein as well, but that are fixed to that location. So if the virus protein is present and have the antibodies with their gold from the conjugate pad, they stick to this pad and the gold turns that strip red, which signals a positive test, AKA an infection. Now beyond that, we have another line called the control line, which has antibodies that stick to the conjugate antibodies, regardless if there is a virus protein present. And so it's a line to simply prove that the conjugate reached that far up and passed the test line, so you know that it worked. Now this process can take up to 15 minutes, which is why these tests require you to wait for that long before you read the results. Okay, now that we're back at the hotel room, I just quickly want to talk about like the high level differences between these at home COVID tests, which are called antigen tests and PCR tests. Which Abbott also makes actually. PCR tests are more accurate, but they take more time and have to go to a lab as essentially they use a procedure called polymerase chain reaction, PCR. And a sample like a nasal swab again to convert the coronavirus RNA into DNA and then duplicate that DNA using a machine that automatically heats up to break down the DNA adds an enzyme and does this over and over again for 30 to 40 times to end up with billions of copies of the original DNA to be able to easily detect coronavirus from even the smallest sample. But this has to be sent to a large centralized testing facility and can take anywhere from 12 hours to five days between the sample collection, the transportation, the duplication, the analysis, and the reporting. And also, they're expensive. Now this is compared to the at-home tests that are much faster and much cheaper and can be performed by anyone without any special training. Now when a person is symptomatic or just has a lot of the virus built up inside of them, these tests have actually been proven to be very accurate. But since they aren't replicating anything, they can be less accurate when someone is asymptomatic or just doesn't have enough of the virus built up in their nose and throat yet. Truthfully though, both of these types of tests have a place during a pandemic. And there you go, how the at-home COVID tests work. Hope you guys learned something from that. I actually really did. Shout out again to Abbott for sponsoring this video. You can check out what they're doing and some of the things they announced here at CES at the link below. Anyway, everybody uh, stay safe out there. And as always, regardless, thanks for watching. Planes. There's always planes. Plane. Now there's a guy running a generator to turn on a light. He's almost got it. Almost. He's given up. I always pick the worst places. <laughs>